Hey guys, welcome back. It's Bill. Hey, I am in my pantry and I have some items that, since I do keep track, you see October 23 and it's roaring to 24. A couple items I want to um, utilize. Now, I understand that the best buy date and the expiration date is good, but what I want to do is, since I'm not going to eat a lot of these um, meatballs with kippers, which I really like, um, in enough time, I'm going to go ahead and freeze dry these um, meatballs and kippers, and I'm going to add those potatoes to it because that's how I like it. So you'll see me next in two seconds as I'm getting ready to open all this stuff. Stand by. All right, I'm back out in my prep cooking area. And uh, I'm not going to show you, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to open all the potatoes and drain them. And then I have my meatball potato kipper mix that I'm going to open. And I'm going to evenly spread this out throughout. Now, the meatballs I like because they're big size. But since I'm going to freeze dry them, I'm going to cut them up in a little more uh, manageable freeze dried bits. So I will get all of this stuff on the trays. Stand by. All right, guys, so here's a quick peek before I cut the meatballs up. Now, I have two extra cans left over here, and I'm just going to divide those equally among the five trays. If you have a freeze dryer, you know that it's done in batches, right? So it's a five tray batch for me. So I'm just going to spread those out. But I want you to see that these meatballs are pretty good size. So I'm making pretty equal sized portions. I'm going to cut up those meatballs, and then uh, I will get these into the chest freezer to freeze overnight getting ready to uh, freeze dry tomorrow. All right, guys, you'll next see me when I'm pulling these out of the deep freeze and getting them ready to freeze dry. Stand by two seconds. All right, it's been 24 hours and I just took my trays out of the deep freeze. So they are frozen and I pre froze my harvest dry freezer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and load these into the freeze dryer. This is what it looks like frozen. You can see I chopped up that meat pretty good. Now these are full trays. I anticipate that uh, this is going to take quite some time to freeze dry. I'm guessing something similar to the oatmeal in the mashed potatoes I've done before. There's a lot of water content in these, uh, this batch for sure. These are heavy trays too, so they're very dense. So I am guessing that for sure it's going to take two days. You guys will follow along with me and we'll figure it out together as we see how things go. All right, so it reminds me to close the drain valve, which I'm going to go ahead and do now. So back here. All right. Make sure it's fully closed there. All right, so I've closed the drain valve. I've loaded my frozen, pre-frozen trays in. And I'm just gonna hit continue. And we're off to the races, guys. You'll next see me in two seconds when I'm pulling them out. Stand by. All right, guys, welcome back. That noise you're hearing is the freeze dryer. Now, it's taken an exceptionally long time to freeze dry uh, this potato soup with meatballs and capers. Now, I woke up this morning, it was already done, so I just added more dry time so I can get my coffee and stuff. But uh, we have been at 97 hours. 97 hours. There's an ROI question in here, um, just when it comes to electricity use. But I want to also point out how much ice had come out um, moisture from this. Now it is touching in there. Now somebody did mention that uh, I can add a stainless steel plate on the outside on that bottom rung to kind of keep the ice off. But I'm going to go ahead and drain, I'm going to go ahead and cancel this right now. 
and I will drain the freeze valve. Let me go ahead and pop that, hang on. All right, so what I wanna do is before I decide if it needs more time or not, hopefully not anymore, I'm gonna go ahead and get this opened up and I'm gonna manually check this. So let me get some gloves here. Hang on one second, guys. Uh, get a couple gloves. Now, this has taken longer than even the oatmeal did, but I don't plan on doing a whole lot of this, but it is pretty dense and moist, right? So this was a potato-based soup that I added extra potatoes to. Let's see what I got here. This is the bottom tray is the one I'm most curious about. All right, so I'm gonna pull this one out. Now it's a whole lot lighter than it was before. So let me just kinda... Yeah, there are no, now this is, this is super, super light. See how it just breaks apart there? So it's super light, it's super ready. I'm actually comfortable with that. That was the one tray I was worried about the most. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull it all out and package it and then I'll rehydrate one. Um, and you'll see me, two seconds, stand by. All right, so I'm back. I have these bagged up and that was five trays. I got six full bags here. Uh, I don't have a Sharpie up here for some reason, so I'm gonna go get a Sharpie and I'll label these. I wanted to show you a couple things. First, when it comes to Mylar bags, not all Mylar bags are the same. So obviously I use and put a heat line on them with my Harvest Right uh, healer. But when I pull it off, right away what I do is I use a cold wet rag and I push down on it really hard to make sure that the seam is closed all the way across the top and make sure it gets a really good seal. Now I've been doing that for quite a while because I've, I've discovered sometimes if you just pull it off and let it air dry, there's little gaps in that seal. So you want to make sure it's sealed. The other thing I want to show you is just how crumbly this is here. Let's see if I can give you an example. So if I just pick this up and I'm going to put it in here, you see that it's just, it's just it is completely dried. Now I'm going to take this portion downstairs and rehydrate it. Now I figure I got good for five to six people per bag in, in here. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six times, let's say five. So I got 30 servings of potato soup there. All right, guys, two seconds. I'm going to go rehydrate this. All right. So I got those uh, six packages put away in long-term storage. I am up here back and I have my one serving inside of here and I have a bunch of very hot water, not boiling. It's hot from uh, the water dispenser. And I'm just going to manually add a big shot here. Kind of stir this up a little bit. Because remember, this is potato soup. I don't want it too runny, but I definitely want it rehydrated. All right, so you can use just a little bit more. And I spilled that water. So that's all I'm giving this one. I didn't want to burn my finger. All right, it looks like there's plenty of water in here. All right, so I am going to, this is what it looks like at the moment. See if I can squeeze just a little bit of water in there. I'm gonna cover this real quick. Now, I don't make this potato soup from scratch. If you saw me and been watching from the beginning, you understand that this was a pantry uh, rotation, right? So I had soup that at its best buy date had gone out in October of last year and it's January this year. So I wanted to make sure that I didn't just let it sit on the shelf and spoil. Let me clean this mess here. So what I did was I went ahead and as you saw in the beginning, I combined it with some potatoes that had also gone south. Now this will extend the life of this food, right? 
So it's going to make this Best Buy date extend out several more years, and it's uh, just a good way to go. All right, give me four minutes to let this rehydrate. I'll see you in two seconds. All right, about a minute more to go. I just wanted to show you guys if you can see the amount of ice built up from this batch. This is pretty, pretty large amount of ice, okay? E even from like the oatmeal and some other uh, soup-based stuff and milk, it pulled a lot of water out of that mix. Now, I went ahead and turned off my machine, but I just hit no defrost because I'm not gonna use this machine for another day or two. I'm just gonna let it sit up here and relax. All right, so let's take a look at what we got here. All right, so let's do a top down. And if you can see what I got here, it, sm it definitely smells like capers and potatoes. All right, so I got sausage and potatoes in the cream. Now it's a little chunkier than the original soup and I probably could have added a little bit more water. But let's just go right in and see what we got here. All right, so I got a big chunk of that sliced meatball. Remember, I cut those up first and some potatoes and it looks hot. Hang on a second. Mm. That tastes great. Now, just a few crunchy spots on the meat which would probably be resolved with just uh, letting it sit for another minute or two. That's good. And that's why I bought a lot of these cans, right? So those particular German uh, caper potato and meatball soup I like. That's why I had a lot of them in stock. I just didn't get to eating them as much as I thought I would because I like a lot of the food. So this is a good way to preserve it. All right, guys. So that's it for today's video. Um, hit that like button. Comment down below if you think this is a good way to extend the shelf life of your food. And if you like these kind of videos, let me know as well. Until next time, everyone, please be safe.